you know, often we don't realize that the vacuum, sorry, vacuum, the <laughs> we assume a vacuum in which Islam came. And it didn't. It came in a context. Nothing exists in a vacuum. And it's only when we start to appreciate the, the historicity of what was going on in Arabia. And, and this is the beautiful thing about Islam. Let me tell you something. You see, it caters for people in all levels. And you, whatever, whatever level you are approaching it with, it is there for you. You could be someone that says, look, I um, want to, um, I just want to pray. And that's all I want to, want to do. And I just want to do rituals. Great. It's there for you on that level. Somebody says, look, I, I want to learn a bit about it, but I'm not interested in um, this kind of deep academic approach towards things. For me, it's more, I, I just want to get on with my life. I want to live, but I'll learn certain things about Islam. I want to be a better human being, which we should all be trying to do. And that's wonderful. And the Quran and Islam is there for that. And then some people would be, well, actually, I want to learn. And some people will be that at a level where I, I want a deeper, much more encompassing context to everything that's going on. And it will provide you these wonderful gems <laughs> and things will start to fall in place. And you'll think, wow, now it makes sense to me. And you see, and and that's and there may be people, like I said, who that's not for them. And that's fine as well. If a person doesn't want to do that, they don't need to. Islam is not here to academize everyone, turn everybody into these kind of academics. It's not about that. It's about being a good human being. But it has this wondrous aspect to it, if you want to. Let me give you an example that, look, people often speak about the... The, sh the Sharia rulings of, let's say, which were the Judeo-Christian, or especially the, the Mosaic law of a nafsu bin nafs, that uh, a soul for a soul, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Now, this, um, this ruling, now I have got separate videos on what I call trajectory hermeneutics, which within the Maliki school, is and the Hanafis had this a bit, and the Hanbali school had it as well, uh, but they were kind of conflicted. The Maliki school were really the developers of this and they expanded on it the most. So they had a concept called Masalih Mursala, which in Usul Fiqh, which was where the Sharia mandates that you that you provide rulings that reflect the day and age. So, for example, and they have a lot of this, so six. Six, seven hundred years ago, uh, the great Maliki legend Al Burzuli, which almost sounds like Brazilian, <laughs> Burzuli, uh, Abul Qasim Al Burzuli, who was from Northwest Africa and the great Sheikh of his time, he had given the fatwa with a group of other scholars like Hajju and many other scholars that were there, that the hudud, the punishments had changed because his day and age had changed. So this is well before modernity. Uh, it's going about seven hundred years ago. And he said that the hudud had changed in his day and age to reflect financial penalties because they seemed to be the more apt thing for his age. And then for centuries, there's a discussion and people practice it. And, and, the, and, and the same thing happened in the East with the Ottomans, Suleiman al-Qanuni, Solomon the Magnificent. He's called Qanuni because he said he, he said that the, shari, the hudud, that the Sharia wants us to substitute them to other penalties like imprisonment and fines and stuff like that. And I've got videos on that. You can watch that. It's called uh, Explaining This and Reading from the Books When They Say It. It's called uh, Trajectory Hermeneutics and Can the Hudud Change Over Time? But let's go back to these Hudud, um, which in the Quran it mentions that we had written in it, in the Torah. That and the nafsa bin nafs that a life for a life an eye for an eye aynu bil aynu wal uznu bil uz that this you see this verse which is reflecting the mosaic law.
people may say, you see, we're reading it today. And you're thinking, people think, ah, oh, look, ah, oh, Islam. Oh, Islam's being barbaric. But they're not understanding it with its context. It didn't come in a vacuum. You have to go back to the time of the Prophet and then before. So look at you and I. We are in a day and age, let's say 2021 now. Many things in our world today are a consequence of what? Of the world wars. You and I weren't there present in the world wars, but many things worldwide, including the United Nations and all of these kind of human rights declarations and all of these things that have become cemented as the daily mantra of our lives are a consequence of the world wars. But imagine a thousand years from today or 600 years from today, all that history got wiped out. And somebody was just looking at your notes and my notes, but they don't, they, or they've chosen to not read about the world wars. And they wouldn't then understand how did things happen? Like, so, okay, there was a shortage of, even sociological things, there was a shortage of, let's say, uh, people. Sorry, I'm just seeing. All right, sorry, I was just seeing this uh, link. It just mentioned about Facebook struggling with some. Okay, so that should be back. Now, <clears throat> let's say um, shortage of 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 factory workers in Britain, so they bring people over from the Commonwealth, which is how let's say my parents and many other people's parents migrated. Now, a person who doesn't have that history may wonder, I wonder how these people go. Maybe these were the indigenous people. They Let's say they don't read any other history. They only have my notes. And they think, well, ah, so this is how, <laughs> and let's say I speak of things like, all right, we're going to start the academic studies in, um, we're going to start the academic studies in September. So people think, okay, he came up with it, but actually there's an entire system of holidays and things which date back to harvesting and stuff like this. So let's go to the time of the prophet. You had something known as a Yamal Arab, which just translates as the days of the Arab, Arabs, but it actually meant to the great wars that the Arabs undertook. And this huge, and these date back to something like 100 to 100 plus years before the Prophet wasallam. And, and so when the Prophet is growing up and the people around him, they are growing up with the backdrop of all of these stories in the background. Not stories, events which are being transmitted as stories.